Welcome to the dawn, the Thomas timeline. We go through the Thomas timeline. Is this truly the Thomas timeline? Welcome to another edition of The Dumbest Timeline. I'm your host, Brian Holiday, and we are here for Series 2 AI. In the past couple of weeks, a lot of interesting AI news has come out, but I will try and post links in the description of this episode for things I think you should be paying attention to, the updates on the lawsuits, other lawsuits that are coming forward, different types of lawsuits. Let me just say, there's a lot of lawsuits going on with AI, and I wonder why big question mark. We can see that a lot of the ways in which AI models were trained was with using people's content without their consent. And that's obviously a major issue that we need to address if we're going to move forward with this. But I don't know if they'll address it in time. And that's the concerning part. I talked to an artist this week, Van Lem, about AI, its use in art, and why it might just never work in the artist industry. From sketch artists to comic book artists, the way it was trained comes up against the way they feel passionate about their art, and it is a major problem that will need to be addressed hopefully sooner than later. We'll be back at the end for a quick wrap-up. Hey, what's up, everyone? This is another edition of The Dumbest Timeline, and we are here with Van Lem, a name that I always almost make a mistake when I say it because it's spelled V-A-N-L-L-E-M and I love it. Uh, Van Lem, we've met a few times at Montreal Comic Con and a bunch of different events. Uh, We've hung out randomly and I am very excited to speak with you about AI. Hey, hello everybody. I'm super happy to be here with you, Brian. Uh, It's always fun to see you and I'm excited to finally get to work on something together. Yeah, It's going to be a very interesting conversation today. And yeah, I mean, you're an artist and I I feel like I want to start right off the top. I see you always working to make your art the best version of what it is. I know you work very hard, very diligently to make your art. I see you even recently, for those of you who follow you on social media, they may have seen you trying to draw Homelander. You were specifically talking about trying to do specific things and make adjustments to how you draw it because you're trying to capture the person's essence. And I find that dedication very important in a world where now people are starting to use AI to just make art whenever they want. I agree. And I find that the AI look looks soulless. There's something different. And even if it looks kind of realistic, sometimes there's always something of yeah. yeah, I'm just I'm not talking about the 25 fingers, but <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. like <laughs> just the eyes, the way they look at you, it's just it's weird. It's that it's not the same. I, and I find and it's funny you mentioned the eyes because I know that when it comes to art, you know, you're drawing something and it it's not it, it's a an image. But I feel like when artists make pieces, the eyes kind of have almost have a semblance of soul to them. Whereas when I see AI stuff, often the eyes look like, you know, when someone's looking at you, but they're looking past you and there's kind of like an emptiness. Am I, is that, am I like going off? Does that make sense? Oh, it's true. It makes me think of people in movie when someone is possessed and like it's the person, but they're not there. (laughs) Yes. Something's off. With, with AI becoming as popular as it has in recent years. Well, first off, I'll start with this. What was your first interaction with AI? It feels like it happened all of a sudden. Maybe I'm not up to date with tech stuff, but since I'm mostly in the artist sphere online, when it became super popular with Midjourney, uh, ChatGPT, all, all those things last year for me, yeah, I started seeing images and at first they were not that good, but they became better very scarily fast. Yeah. And uh, it was a shock for the whole community. And one day it wasn't there. And the next day I woke up and it was everywhere and scary. And the the new normal, I was really hoping it was going to be a trend, but it is there to stay. 
Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's an important aspect of it. I feel that there's a lot of conversations in the community about AI as a danger. And some people are hoping and maybe still hoping that they can stop AI, but I feel like it is not going to go anywhere. Yeah, there's too many people making money. And we know that money rules. Uh -huh. I'm, so <laughs> I'm so happy you said it because you said the key thing. There's too many people making money off of it. Uh, you go to conferences and present your art. You sell your art. You usually get tables. Have you noticed, speaking of people trying to make money, have you noticed an uptick in AI art vending at conventions? So far, the convention I've been at, they don't allow AI art. So we've been very lucky okay. and all the artists speak together. So if we have a doubt that someone is using that stuff, we will report them and have them exposed. And it happened at some conventions. I've seen the post online talking about it. We don't want them. <laughs> of course. Yeah, it's course. not an insult to our craft. Yeah. And I, I like that the community works together to identify it. Is there something, I mean, we did just talk about the fact that when you see the art, you can kind of tell. Is there anything that the collective group of artists do to try and identify? Are you sharing tips with each other on how to identify? Is there a conversation? Because I'm not an artist. So I always wonder in this industry that is being heavily affected by this, how do you as a community adjust to these changes? I'll try to find you a post so you can okay. link it. But there has been many going around. There are so many details. Of course, it's easier for artists because our eyes are trained mm. to, uh, to notice those things. But there is an uncanny valley going on. And when you look close up, the details don't make sense. At okay. first, you might see a scenery like kids playing in the park. Then the kid, a part of his clothes will connect to his hair. Mm. You will see an animal, but it's missing a leg. And it's not because it's injured. It's just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just not there. I, some yeah, some things are connecting, colors are not right, the shape of objects, many little details. It's like um, those exercises as kids we did when you got the two pictures and it's like yes. the, the differences. And when you take a moment, you're like, wait a second, why is there a hole in the sun? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so it's things like that. So it, yeah, of course, like we said, like too much, too many fingers on Canyon Valley stuff. Yeah that don't make sense at uh, the composition it it it's also weird it's just all kinds of little stuff like that and uh, online like everybody's grandmas right now are sharing like <laughs> pictures of stuff that supposedly happened to uh, share if you care and it's yes. just a crazy image that never happened but for those i wish we had more um like the general people knew more about this, but mm. for the art, it's easier to uh, to notice because especially if you follow an artist and you scroll back and if they were active before 2022, yeah, if suddenly their art style changes completely and also they used to post once every two weeks and now every day, like they're posting high resolution images in completely different styles, it's impossible to post all the time, every day, and the styles are different. You can't yeah. have 14 styles. It's little things we notice like that. So. No, that's super interesting. That's a very interesting... I never... This is why I wanted to speak with you. The idea that before 2022, an artist who might have been making their... Who started in their craft and might have felt motivated to try and create, and then Mid Journey or all these other... AI art sites start to come along and they can now just pay a subscription, take some art that they've made, or they can give prompts, get art, and then put it into whatever software they use to try and adjust it to look more like their style. And then they want to make a profit off of that. And it, it feels like you're breaking an agreement that you made with the people that have been supporting you until that point. So it's very, I, 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 I almost, I mean, not that I want to give them a platform because I generally don't want to get the perspective of someone who I feel is scamming, but I am interested in understanding why do that as opposed to continue 
creating art? Because if you're an artist, and to you, I ask this question, do you do this because of the money or do you genuinely love making art? If I did it for the money, I'd be a masochist. <laughs> uh, I just, it's been my passion my whole life and it's a pleasure to do. I don't know if it's public knowledge, but I think the very important thing to say and the reason why we hate AI art is because it's unethical. It's impossible for those programs to make the art without scraping art from everybody else. So it, because of that, all the artists are being stolen from without any compensation, without our consent, and then people are making money on our backs. So it's just, it's super, super bad. And no matter how they try to say that, oh, we're going to make it better and our pool of images is better. No, it's not. And they even found like pictures of random people. They found mythical documents, like anything has been said in that machine. And some horrors that I don't even want to say on the podcast, but you can imagine how freaks of the world would use that tool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is, that is a very difficult aspect to think of. And I, I do agree with you that you can't build, you can't fix something that you built off of a bad system because it will always be built from a bad system. You have to start from scratch. And like you said, because everyone's making money, they don't want to start from scratch because it would cost them. Uh, I did have a conversation and people who are listening to this have probably heard this episode already, but I spoke with a musician who had a really interesting idea and I'd like to pitch it to you and see what you think. He explained, so I, I don't know if you know that when you bought blank CDs back in the day, there was a fee that was attached to purchasing blank CDs that went into a pool for recording artists and then that pool paid out to all the different recording artists that were registered. Wow, so, I didn't know. Yeah, so that's how that that's how it was for CDs because once blank CDs became a big thing in the market, you could burn music. So there was a sense that anyone who bought a blank CD could potentially rip music, and so they figured we have to do something to compensate the artist. So he was suggesting, if you were, and I I don't think like we said because the system is so poorly made, they ideally have to start from scratch. But if they were to start from scratch, and use people's art again but pay out to artists out of a pool for everyone that they everyone's art that was used would that come across as a possible option in the art community do you think people would be open to it i don't think so oh even I, then okay okay yeah it, it's too hard to know i'm assuming with the cd thing it was everybody that was like registered as yes, like there was rent or something but artists it's everybody like it's, it's my little brother, my cousin, it's my coworker. It's just everybody posting on Instagram, DeviantArt, anywhere. So it's point. just it's creeping the whole internet. So that dividend of money, yeah, that like that five cents every five months that I'm gonna get, <laughs> uh, and that person is gonna just like make a bunch of money using my hard work, the skill I worked for over thirty years to achieve, and. All the people around? No, we, we don't want that. No. That's fair. That's fair. That's a good point. Yeah, no. Uh, I, I mean, I think the idea that he had is very interesting. And I do, for the music perspective, where he talked about AI scraping for musicians, I that seems to make sense to me because there's already a model in place. Like you said, when you're an artist, you register your songs. There's SOCAN, there's CMRRA. But with art, you're right. There's There's just sites that people post on and there's no real control over that. There's no governing bodies that you register with. And to ask every artist to register would be a very all encompassing task and would need an entire different organization. And that just seems like a lot of work that ultimately you're doing a lot of work to try and get money out of someone who shouldn't be making money off of you in the first place. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I don't, I can't think of a way that to make it possible. No, no, that's great. That's fair. I, But I wanted to end off by asking you your final thoughts. Is there a way for the artist community to open up to the use of AI that you see? 
the current state of AI, I don't think can be accepted by us. If mm. there was a way to train the AI on a database of consenting images, mm. then that's something else. But right now, I don't think, it, imagine someone would say like, oh, we're going to use all the pictures of your family on Facebook for the AI. You yeah. don't want that. And they're doing that. Yeah. <laughs> they're doing it. Anything yeah. that's online, they're taking so like, would you like save a picture of you in the AI machine for some fee or right now, like, there's just no way I wish there was, and it's a conversation going on and we keep trying to find ways, but well, the artists, we don't want to coexist with that and we're forced to, and until there's an ethical way to train those machines, I, I don't think it's possible. Perfect. That's, that is a hundred percent fair. I think that is one of the most valid points at the end of the day. If there is not an ethical way to do this as a community, it makes sense that you would not want it. I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me about this. Cause I, I can only imagine that this isn't fair to, or to, it definitely doesn't feel fair to any of you. And I hope that we can find a way for the art community to continue to prosper and for AI to be better managed or ultimately restarted which i know is very unlikely but in a perfect world and obviously like i said this is the dumbest timeline not the <laughs> perfect one so <laughs> the the chances of it happening are slim but fingers crossed that it can be better yeah uh can you tell people where they can check out all your content and where they can go for That's your so art cute. So uh, as you said, my username is Van Lem, V-A-N-L-L-E-M. You can find me on most places online. I'm mainly active on Instagram. This one is Van Lem.art, but I am also on YouTube, on TikTok. I'm on, um, my God, <laughs> on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. Um, I yeah, I'm a bit everywhere. So just with Van Lem, you will find me. And on my Instagram, I have the link tree. You can click on my bio with all the links, my social media, my YouTube channel, all my projects. Uh, and feel free to DM me, comment on my stuff. I, I love to keep uh, the community active. The last thing I was going to say, what, as, are you still doing commissions? I actually stopped. And actually, it, it could be another conversation. But one of the reasons I stopped was also because of the rise of AI. And I feel like... People, they were cheap before, but now they're going to be, they're just going to scrape my art and put it in the machine. Like, I don't know. I, I could, but right now it's, it's not my priority. I have other projects I, I prefer. Okay. That's such an interesting point that I did not think about people requesting specific art to then use that with an AI. Well, I'm scared. Or maybe if someone doesn't want to pay my fee, they I'm just not in, interested in that. And I feel like people, they will be cheaper now because they will say, hey, yeah. why are you charging that amount when I could just like it, try to generate something with your art style? So I'm just, I don't, I don't want to get uh, into that hassle right now. So I'd rather sell my artwork on my Etsy shop. And uh, yeah. Very fair, very valid. Thank you so much once again for taking the time to speak with me. And uh once again, everyone check all the links. It's going to be in the description. Van Lem, thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you at another con soon. Always my pleasure. Thank you for having me. And just like that, we come to the end. And we realized that the way we are going about with AI right now, as much as I love AI, might not be working for everybody. There's a lot of parties involved that are going to be hurt and a lot of parties that are going to benefit from this. And the people who are going to benefit from this are the people already benefiting and already making tons of money who don't actually need this more. And the people who are going to lose out are the creatives whose work is going to potentially be lost in the melting pot that is AI's training model. And it's concerning. And as Van Lem said, unethical. So it's hard for me because, as you know, I do genuinely find AI interesting, but it is definitely hard to talk with an artist and hear them talk about how passionate they are and see 
from their perspective, which I already had quite a few people explain to me from their perspective, but to get an in-depth look and to discuss, and even after this interview, Van Lem and I continued to talk off mic and just to hear how this affects artists, it's really unfortunate. And I'm hoping that we'll be able to figure something out that can benefit everyone equally. But like I said, this is the dumbest timeline, not the darkest one. And in the dumbest timeline, greed will often win out. And on that note, we'll be back with another one soon. Peace, everybody. The Dumbest Timeline, Series 2, AI, hosted by Brian Holiday. Produced by Brian Holiday for Brian Holiday Productions. Co-produced in partnership with Free X Agents Media. Theme song by Jasper Q. Jones. Mixing by Brian Holiday. Enjoyed the show? Follow this show on Spotify or review it on Apple Podcasts. Lastly, subscribe to The Dumbest Timeline on your favorite podcast app. Thanks for listening.